Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at something we normally don't get a chance to play with very often, or at least I don't, and that is how to get started with Adobe Premiere Pro CC, the 10 things beginners want to know how to do. That's right, due to popular demand, many of you have asked, hey, how come you don't ever cover, you know, the video products? Or how come you don't cover, you know, the web products or the other products? Well, that's because technically I'm the design, maybe sometimes the photography evangelist. So these products are usually outside of my, um, my expertise or comfort level because, you know, they're not the ones I'm in every day. But as a photographer, I do video. So, and I've been using Premiere Pro for a very long time. And I figured, why not go ahead and give you guys a treat and give you guys the 10 things you want to know how to do with Premiere Pro. So we're approaching this as if you've never used Premiere Pro before. If you are a Creative Cloud member and you're a full member, you can download the three products we're going to take a look at today. And that is Premiere Pro CC, Bridge CC, and we're even going to take a quick look into After Effects CC. We're just going to do one simple thing in there and then we're going to be done with it because this is not an After Effects tutorial but we do integrate with After Effects, so we might as well use it. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing, and it's actually a little bit before number one, and that is getting your materials together. So here, I've got an external hard drive, and on that external hard drive, I've got a folder called Bridezilla, and that's just because that's the name of the project we're gonna be working on. But what I've gone ahead and done is just taking the time to collect all the videos that I'm gonna edit. So some came from an iPhone, some came from a GoPro camera, so forth and so on. And I've collected the stills or the photos that I'm going to input into the project. And I've also got some royalty-free music. And the royalty-free free music, for those of you who are wondering where do you get music that you can use and you know not violate copyright, I used pond5.com. So pond5.com allows you to buy, uh, you know, one time, you know, one time fee for multiple use in your own projects, uh, royalty free music and, and photos and illustrations and so forth and so on. So I use pond5 to get my royalty free uh, music for this project. So with that said, so that's kind of the prelude to getting started. Just get all your stuff together in one spot or at least know where it is. So that way when it comes time to input it or import it into Premiere Pro, you'll already know where it is. Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing or number one, creating your new project. So we're gonna launch Premiere Pro for the first time. And let's get it launched here. And uh, while we're talking about that, uh, it's probably a good time to mention that Premiere Pro can be kind of resource intensive, especially Premiere Pro and After Effects and Photoshop if you're using them together. So you probably want to quit out of any other programs you're running that you won't be using during this, this project. So if you've got your email open, you, you know, for example, I opened up the web browser, we're done with it, I'll go ahead and quit that. Anything that you can quit that you're not gonna use, all the better because then that frees up more memory and more resources for Premiere Pro. So now that I've got Premiere Pro open, I'm just gonna go ahead and say create a new project. And it's going to ask me, it's going to give me, you know, this kind of complex dialogue box of saying, oh my God, what do I do here? It's very simple. We're just going to tell it what the name of the project is. Bridezilla Behind the Scenes. Okay, and now it wants to know where to put it. And if you don't tell it where to put it, it's just going to put it in your documents folder in a folder called Adobe Premiere Pro 7.0 or whatever the version is you'll be working with. And we want to tell it to put it on a drive where we've got more room. So I'm going to go ahead and say browse. I'm going to go out to that uh, external hard drive. I'm going to go into the Bridezilla folder. And just to keep things organized, I'm going to create a new folder in there. I'm going to call it Bridezilla PP for Premiere Pro. All right. So now that we've got that and it created that folder, now I'll say that's where I want you to put, put this project. And it will also use that folder to put any temporary files it generates. So you kind of want to do this on a drive where you got plenty of room. So step one, or the first thing out of the 10 things people want to know how to do, how to create the project. And we just did. Now, number two, 
We collected all that media and now we want to know how to import it, how to bring it in so we can actually start putting it together. You can do that a couple of different ways. You can drag and drop it in. So if I go back to the operating system, go to that folder, I can just say, hey, you know what? I want all three of those things in, just drag them in and it will import them in. Or I can say, uh, double click right in the import media area. And again, go out to where those things are and find them. And I can either bring them in one by one or I could do the same thing and just say, you know what? Bring in all three of those projects. So I could do it either way uh, to bring it in, whatever is more convenient for you, drag and drop or, or um, uh, using the import dialog or even file import, whatever you want to do. So that brought the, now since I told it to bring in the folders, it brought them in as bins and that's kind of a little bit more organized. It, it just makes it look uh, a little bit neater, especially when you're, you've got hundreds of items or hundreds of stills. Uh, it's nice that they would be all in one folder as opposed to, um, you know, list it there amongst everything else. Okay, so now we've got our music, our photos, and our videos in. So let's go to the videos, because this is important to start with. I'm just gonna go ahead and open up that video bin. And uh, I can dock this, by the way, and kind of put this, you know, alongside everything else. But there it is. So here are my videos, and Premiere Pro does this cool thing where if I just hover my mouse over it, we call this hover scrub. I can just scrub through the videos to see what they are, so forth and so on. Okay, so that's cool that I can do this. Uh, here, I just wanna check one thing here. I wanna view this as a list. Uh, I wanna point out something. Now, the videos here, some were from the GoPro camera, which captured them at 2997 frames per second, and the ones that came off the iPhone were 30 frames per second. And if I click on one of them, uh, here we can, let's see if I can show the properties here. I just want to check one more thing here, preview area. So I'm going to toggle on the preview area. Um, by the way, I did both of those from the menu. I just went to list and preview area if those aren't already on. And what I want to do is check the size. So 1920 by 1080 is HD. That's standard HD or high def. 1080p is the other way it's uh, referred to. Uh, the other ones are also 1920 by 1080. So they're both 1080p, but just at different frame rates. And Premiere Pro doesn't care. It will let you mix frame rates. But which one do I start with? Do I start with the 2997? Do I start with the 30 frames per second? And it really doesn't matter which one you start with because it, again, it'll conform the other ones to the proper speed. And if you're looking for advice, I would say probably use the one where, that you have the most of. In other words, if I've got a ton of 10, 2997s, only one 30 frame per second one, then I'd probably do the whole thing at 2997. Or if I the opposite, a bunch of 30 frames per second or something else, then I'd probably start with that. Um, again, this is a beginner thing. We can spend a whole bunch of time on frame rates, but just I'll leave you, I'll leave you with that. All right, so I'm gonna start with the 2997 one. And the reason I'm gonna start with that one is because I wanna build my sequence, also referred to, I refer to them sometimes as timeline, uh, with that starting clip. Now, how do I do that? Okay, right click, and I'm going to say, uh, new sequence from clip. And this is the beauty of it. I don't have to teach Premiere Pro what settings my videos are in or what format they're in. If I just do new sequence from any one clip, it will build a timeline based on the settings of that clip. And more importantly, it will then uh, put the video on the timeline or on the sequence. Now, I don't wanna start with that video. I just wanted it to build a sequence. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that video, hit my delete key or backspace and just go ahead and take it off the sequence but now the sequence has been built. Now here's the other thing you'll notice. If you look in the bin, it created that sequence with the same exact name as the first video that I used on it. And of course, I don't want that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the sequence and we're just gonna call this Bridezilla. So that way I know that that's the sequence and the other one is the actual video. All right, so now that we've done that, we've got our sequence built. We've imported our media, so we've done number two and we've done number three, which is create the new sequence. What's next? Well, we're at the beginning of our video. And of course, at the beginning of my video, 
I want a title. I want an opening something so you know th what this is going to be about. Now, Premiere Pro has a titler. You can do a new title right here. You can do a still, you can do a roll, you can do a crawl, you can do it based on a template. You can do all kinds of cool new titles in Premiere. But the coolest way to do a title is in After Effects. And again, this is not an After Effects thing, but I want to show you the way I would do it. And I would do it with After Effects. And even if I didn't know anything about After Effects, it's going to be easy enough for you to grasp. So here's what we're going to do. Step by step. File. We're going to do new, or I'm sorry, Adobe Dynamic Link. In other words, I want to create a new After Effects composition based on my current Premiere Pro project and link it to Premiere Pro automatically. So if I just say create a new After Effects composition, it's going to come and say, hey, I noticed you're using 2997, 1920, 1080. I'm going to set up your new After Effects composition with the exact same settings. Yes, do that. All right, so now that I've done that, it will launch After Effects and it will create that sequence for me. Sorry, project, not a sequence. Um, and in a few seconds here, while it's doing all that, After Effects will come up and it will say, okay, where do you want to save this After Effects project? And I'm going to call it opening title. And I'm going to tell it to save it onto the same hard drive into the Bridezilla folder. So again, just keeping things neat, putting them all in the same place on the same drive. All right, so now here's After Effects. We're in After Effects. I don't know what to do. Okay, I don't have to worry about any of all this other stuff. I just want to create my animated sequence. Over here on the right hand side, under effects and more importantly, presets, whenever you see the word presets, that's usually a good thing, there are some animation presets, including some text animated presets, pre <laughs> presets, including animate in. But I don't know what they look like. I don't know which one to use. Well, here's why, why I told you to download Bridge if you didn't have it. We're going to go ahead and say, um, browse presets. When you say browse presets, it launches bridge CC and shows you all those same folders. So here's the text folder. Here's the animate in folder. And there they all are. If I click on any one of them over in the preview area, it will preview what that effect looks like. So I can see which one I want to use for my opening sequence. So there it is. That's what character shuffle in looks like. If I look at decoder fade in, that's what decoder fade in. That's usually the one I use, but we'll try a different one. If I look at smooth, that's what smooth looks like. Spin by word, that's what that one looks like. So you can just click on any one of these and see what it looks like so you can see which one you want to use. So I want to use the slow fade in or fade on. Okay. These were just, we just came over to Bridge to look at them. We're not doing anything with them in Bridge. It's just so you can know what they actually do. So Bridge is just serving as a, hey, I want to show you what all these presets do. Now that you know which one you want, which one you want to use, remember the name of it because you're going to go back over to After Effects and use it. So we're going to toggle back over to After Effects. And I want smooth, um, let's see, smooth fade on. That's the one I want, and I'm just going to double click. That was it. I double clicked, and it added it to my After Effects composition. Now, if I just move the playhead, there is my smooth fade in with my sample text. Obviously, I don't want the sample text. So, if I scrub over far enough to see the text, all I have to do is double click. The text is highlighted. I can now type in my own title. Actually, let's do it all caps. Bride, not bridge, Bridezilla. And of course, I want it bigger, centered, so forth and so on. So let's do all those things. Let's highlight it. And you've got a regular text panel or character panel over here. You already know how to use that in all your other programs. And the beauty of this is we can either type in the point size or just use the scrub. So I'm just going to slide over to the right, make it bigger. Uh, let's go down to the paragraph panel and center it. Let's again, we could choose whatever font we want, but let's go ahead and just make it nice and big. Okay, 
That was it. If we go back and preview it, slow fade on. I just hit the space bar to preview it. That's it. It did our slow fade on using our word, our text, whatever font we want. There it is. I'm done. I'm done with After Effects. That's all I needed to do. So we're just going to go ahead and save the project. And we can keep After Effects open if you knew you wanted to go back and make changes, but I'm done. That was it. Quit After Effects. After Effects has been quit. Let's go back to Premiere Pro, which is right there. Premiere Pro is open, and there it is. Bridezilla behind the scenes, uh, the After Effects opening title sequence that we created. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and drag that onto our timeline at the beginning. So now if we hit spacebar here, there's our Bridezilla showing us what it would play like. Now, it's going to go on for, looks like, 30 seconds because that's what the default was for After Effects, a 30-second project. I could have set it differently in After Effects, but I didn't want to confuse you. It's just easier to go ahead and fix it here. So now that I've done the slow fade on, let's go ahead and scrub past it here. And by the way, we're just dragging this little playhead here. Now that I've... Um, I can start at the beginning and drag to the right till it fades on a couple seconds and I don't need anything else after that. So we can go ahead and trim this clip down to just that, that little bit. So we start at the right hand side and just drag it to the left until we reach that part and it will snap. There we go. That's all we need. So now if we go back, spacebar, our Bridezilla will play a couple seconds later, it will just stop. That's it. So number four, we've created our animated opening using After Effects. Now we're going to start bringing in our videos. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, let's go here and adjust this down a little bit so we can get some more video in here. And I'm gonna start with the iPhone videos because the iPhone videos were uh, with the makeup being done. Now, of course, I can play it here in this little bitty window and try and see what it is. Or more importantly, we've got this source window. So if you double click on a clip in your bin, it opens it in the source window so that you can see if, it's, if you wanna use it. You can tell which part of it you wanna use and you can make all your settings here before you add it to your sequence. Okay, so now I'm gonna just go ahead and scrub through this. She's getting her makeup applied. Looks like the eyebrows. And I can go all the way through this, but of course I don't need all this. You're just getting kind of a behind the scenes. So maybe from the beginning to a couple strokes, maybe right there. Maybe that's all I need. So you have an in point, which we already started at the beginning. So that is our in point. And you have an out point. I'm gonna click the out point, meaning only use that first second and a half. So now that I've used that first second, I could use these buttons to insert it into the timeline, but the problem is it's gonna insert it with the audio. I don't want the audio. Now, of course, I could go ahead and insert it with the audio and turn that audio off later, but I wanna show you the way I would do it, and that is you have these two buttons right here, the video and the audio, and these let you drag whichever one you want if you want them separate. So I want just the video. I'm just gonna drag the video down, drop it right on the timeline. And there it is. So our video is there, but let me undo that for a second because there's one thing I forgot to do. When the Bridezilla is done, it just kind of stops. I want it to go away when it's done. So I'm gonna select this clip and I'm gonna add a default transition. The default transition is across dissolve and to do that, I'm just going to hit Command on the Mac or Control on the PC, D for default. That will add my default fade. All right, so now when I hit that, play, it will fade out. Now I can drag down just that one piece of video after it. So it fades out the Bridezilla and then plays my first clip. Now, I can use other parts of the same video. In other words, I only want it that first second. Okay, and she's kind of using her finger there on the, on the eyebrow there, kind of smoothing it out. Maybe I want a little bit of that. So end point from there, 
couple of strokes with the finger, out point. Drag down the video. It's that easy. Okay, next. Do I want any more of this? Eh, we got the brush. Okay, we can kind of see maybe she goes over to the other side. Starts right there. Okay, end point. I in, end point. Couple strokes. Out point. Drag the video down. That's all we're doing. And if we want it video and audio, we would use the buttons or use keyboard shortcuts. But that's all we want. And again, do I want any more of this? I think you get the idea. <laughs> okay, go to our next clip. Double click. Okay, do I want any of this clip? She's smiling, laughing. Have, oh, there's an airbrush. I kind of like the airbrush. In point. A little bit of airbrushing. Out point. Drag down that piece of video. Okay, do I want any more of this? Nope, don't want any more. Next clip. So it's just kind of rinsing, do the same things over and over again. Do I want any of this where they kind of gathered around, walking past the camera? I kind of like this because she's going to come by, a little, do a little wave. I kind of like that wave, so I'm going to start right there. End point. She waves, camera goes by. Eh, maybe not even that much. Maybe that out point, drag that piece of video down. Great. Okay. Any more of this video? Nope. Next video. All right. Now they're getting their hair done and you kind of get the idea. It's get, it gets kind of monotonous after a while because you're just kind of doing the same thing over and over again. Do I want any of the hair styling? Maybe a little bit of hair right there. End point. <laughs> Maybe there, out point. And this is again, keep it short, I'm showing little bits and pieces. And last one, Let's see if there's anything on this one I want. I come around here, yes, I come around and grab that spot. Hair is getting curled, and then it goes over to the next girl. So we'll start there, and next girl. She kind of does a presenting the hand there and we'll just grab that piece okay that's it okay that was all the the behind the scenes in the dressing room now we go to the actual shoot and there's i'm going to spare you there's really only one of these videos i need and i think it's the first one let's go ahead and double click and again i grab the camera i start shooting and then, and then they get up to walk away so i don't want to walk away need all of the shooting part because you get the idea. Uh, I'm just trying to pick a good point to start. Maybe right there. And where do I want to end? A couple of camera flashes. And maybe when I stop to look at the monitor that you can't see. Okay, that's it. That's all I need of that. And we'll go ahead and drag that piece down. And that was a much longer piece of video. And again, we're keeping this kind of short, maybe down to a minute. And that was it for the video. Next, adding your stills, number seven, and animating them. So let's go to our bin with our stills in them, our photos. Double click. And we've got the Bridezilla photo. We've got the, again, kind of a behind the scenes setup shot. And we don't need number three. So I'm going to go drop in this one first. So I'm just going to drop it in. Now, here's the thing. This video is 1920 by 1080 in size. Your digital SLR, your digital camera, takes stills that are bigger than that. So when we go over to that, that uh, picture, you can't even see it because it's much bigger than the frame. All right, so here's what we're going to do. And we're going to do a couple things, so we need to know how to animate it anyway. I'm going to select the still. Then I'm going to let's close this bin for now. I'm going to then go to the source window. Next to the source window are the effects controls. So the effects controls are here. And with the effects controls, with that clip, or that, I'm calling it a clip, but it's really a photo, that photo selected. And by the way, the photo defaults to five seconds. You can shorten it or make it longer just by dragging on the end of it. I'm going to go in and say under motion. And again, we're going to go back to the beginning of it because it's got its own little scrubby thing up here. 
Back to the beginning of the still, I want to affect the scale, which is the size of it, over time. So I click the little stopwatch to animate it. So I'm going to first of all dial it down to maybe there. And I'm just going to move the position of it. Let's see, that's vertical and horizontal. Let's move the horizontal position or vertical position up. Okay, I'm not animating the vertical position, I'm just moving it up. Okay, but I do want to animate the scale. So over time, I want that picture to get small. Oh, let's see, maybe bigger. Okay, yeah, I want to start smaller right there. We'll go to the end of it or near the end. And we'll say that we want it to go bigger. We want it to get that big by the end of five seconds. That was it. This is what it's going to do. It's going to start there and go to there. You've animated your still over time just that easily. All right. So now that we've done that, we just simply go to the end of it and drop in our next still. So open up the photos again. Our next one is the actual Bridezilla shot. I'm just going to drag that one in. Put it right on the end and go uh, again, select it, go to the effects controls for it. I'd actually have to move over a little bit to get to it. There it is. There it is. Okay. We're going to go to the beginning of it. Same thing. We're going to animate the scale of it over time. We're going to start the scale way down and maybe start bigger and go to the end of it or near the end. And we're just going to say that we want to go ahead and scale it down. And I'm just dragging on any of these numbers. You get this little um, pointer that slides left and right. So I'm just dragging the number left and right visually seeing it go down. All right. So this one's going to start out bigger and go down. The other one started out smaller, I think, and went bigger. Let me make sure I can't remember. Yeah, the other one started out smaller, went bigger. This one starts out bigger, goes smaller. So we're kind of doing the opposite effect. And now we're at the end. So the last thing we want to do, or last few things we want to do, we want to add a the end title. And we want to add music, fade the music out, and export it out. So those are the last three things we're going to do. So first of all, add the title. We could add another After Effects title if you wanted something cool. We're just going to do something simple. File, New, Title. This will just do a Premiere Pro title. We're going to call it The End. Click OK. And it says, OK, well, what do you want this to say? And I'm going to go ahead and click The End. And select All. I'm going to pick a different type. There we go. You can pick whatever font, size, color, whatever you want, all from the right hand side here. And we're going to go ahead and make this bigger. Again, we can scrub it up. And all we have to do to save our title, I know this is going to sound weird, is simply close it. That's it. The title is there. Somewhere in your bin, there's a title called The End. Let's see where it put it. Oh, there it is. Put it there. And we're just going to drag it on to the end. Okay, so now are the end titles right there. And we want this one. We're going to select it. Hit Command D on the Mac, Control D on Windows. So it puts in a default transition on the end. So it's going to fade out when it's done. All right. So we've got this silent movie now with all of our clips and everything going on. How do we make it? have music. Well, remember, somewhere down here in your bins, you've got a music bin, and let's see what these sound like. We can double click, we can play. Double click on this one, and we can also play them in the preview window as well, but here we go. Cool, but don't like it as much. All right, so this one's got a little bit more beat to it, a little bit more, more action. We're just going to take the whole thing and drag it down to the 
available audio track. All right, so as I expected here when close the music bin now, that music is way longer than the video. I put it at the beginning, but it goes out way past the end here. So I'm just gonna scrub past it here, scroll past it, and then just bring it in. I'm just dragging the end of it to collapse it down to the end or just past the end of our video. Maybe there. All right, but here's the problem. If I let that play to the end, it's just gonna abruptly stop. And I don't want that, I wanna fade it out. So number nine, we're gonna fade the music. Number eight was adding the music. So to fade the music, you've got audio transitions, just like we had visual transitions or video transitions. So we're gonna to go to the audio transitions, crossfade, and I like the exponential fade. We're just gonna drag it onto the end of our audio. That was it. So now if we go to the end. All right, I think you're due, for, due to watch the whole thing. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's click on the project window. Whenever you've got a particular window or panel selected, it will have this yellow line around it letting you know it's selected. So if I click on this one, this one selected, click on this one selected, this one selected, so forth and so on. So we want the program window selected, and then you're gonna hit the little tilde key on your keyboard. On a US keyboard, it's right above the tab key. So when I hit the tilde and the space bar, And that came in at one minute, eight seconds. All right, now, how do I get back to everything? Hit the tilde again. That will take you back to everything else. And the only little thing I want—I didn't like was when it went to the end after that last photo, it went to the end title. I didn't like that it didn't fade to that. So we're gonna do a video transition. We're gonna go to the dissolves. We're gonna go to cross dissolve. We're just gonna drag a cross dissolve right between those two. So now, it will go in that last photo. And okay, about it. Okay, last but not least, number 10. How do we get this out? We've done all this work. And of course, um, Premiere Pro has been saving the project along the way, but we'll go ahead and save it one more time. And now I want to export this so I can use it outside of Premiere. So under our file menu, you've got an export media when we do export media, here's where it gets kind of, oh my God, what do I pick? What do I do? It doesn't matter where this is, by the way. I just put it back to the beginning out of habit. But anyway, we can go in and we can say format. And you get all of these complicated, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing because I'm new. I'm going to make it easy for you. Nine times out of 10, you want H264. When you do H.264, and again, you're, if you're a pro and you know you want something else, pick the thing you want. But for the beginners, start with H.264, and then under preset, again, presets usually mean good things, you've got all the presets in nice English for you. So whether you want it for your Android phone, your Apple TV, your iPhone, your, uh, you know, whatever it is, YouTube, so let's say I want a YouTube video HD at 2997. That's what it will do. And I have the choice of sending it to the output queue, which means I want to stack them up because I want to maybe export one for my Apple TV, one for my iPad, one for my phone, one for YouTube. I can just keep adding them to the queue and it will do them all. 
or that's the only one I want, then I can tell it where to put it by clicking here, where to save it to. Right now it's just gonna save it out onto the desktop. I can pick the drive or whatever I wanna save it onto. And then I can say export, which means do it now. So doing it now means it's doing it right now. And again, Premiere Pro is tied up, but I can still go do other things. By the way, folks, that's it. 10 things you wanted to know how to do to use Premiere Pro CC. We threw in a few bonus ones like After Effects and Bridge and all that, but those are the 10 things. We did a beginning, how to get started from scratch. No nothing, just started with a project. And of course, there's a lot more editing we could do, a lot of little things we can do. Premiere Pro can do so many things, but hopefully that will get you started or maybe inspired to get started because it's just that easy. We'll catch you on the next one, folks. Thanks again for watching.